Hello, my name is Les and welcome to The Monster Painter and as you can see my buddy Dave is here with me today and we're going to be taking a look at his extensive collection of Dreamblade miniatures. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dreamblade was a uh, collectible miniatures game put out by Wizards of the Coast way back in 2006. It lasted one year, they put out I think five sets Apparently there is a lost set that uh, didn't get released, but uh, in that time they flooded the world with the craziest, weirdest miniatures I've ever seen. And uh, we're going to look at the best of them and the weirdest of them. Dreamblade takes place in the collective unconsciousness of humanity and is a battle between two dream lords, sounding a little bit like Magic the Gathering, but, well, like Magic the Gathering, it's got a real real fantasy flavor as a, a distinctive aspect of it. Fantasy or nightmares? Fantasy and nightmares. And the, there's a lot of uh, uh, folklore and mythology in it, too, isn't there? There's hmm? even some religion, too. Oh, dear. Well, we want to keep that out. Uh, the... the, <laughs> the they have a lot of flavor for something that's sort of generic. I mean, this guy looks like he should have a whole background story. Yeah, there's a lot of implied theme, but as far as I know, it's not from any source material other than what they let their artists, uh, you know, let their imagination just run away with it. And there's some straight out imaginative models. Like, what is this guy? A dragon ship golem. A dragon ship golem. Now he would be a very fun guy to fight on the docks of some some uh, city. But if you're on the baking hot savanna, this guy is someone you don't want to run across because he looks like he'll smash the heck out of a party of adventurers. <laughs> Holy mackerel! That's got to be my favorite model so far. He is pretty cool looking rhinoceros man with a big club and this is the one you really like yeah, i like i love golems so this one's a really cool he's a sun golem sun golem titan no sun titan and uh i just love golems so that was that one's super cool to me yeah lovely the game definitely draws on uh european folklore hi bobby aga but uh, it's not really a folkloric game is it dave no it's an abstract area control game Right, and the it provides you with things to modify the areas you control, like these lovely buildings. Yeah, they're called locations, and they can give you benefits in the spaces that they uh, they get played in. Right, they affect the game. Certainly, they look cool, but they're not really 28 millimeters, are they? 28 millimeter models. No, but um, they're definitely fun. Very I mean, beautifully sculpted. Yeah, those are great. They're very convincing and evocative of high fantasy uh, settings. Although some of them are a little more cosmic horror. <laughs> wow, holy Lovecraftian Batman. That's a hideous hound of Tolatus or something like that. But they get even stranger. What on earth is that thing? That is the internet. Oh my goodness. It sure as hell is, isn't it? Ooh, it's like a metaphor. Dreamblade is definitely not remembered as a generic fantasy game by any stretch of the imagination because that's what Dreamblade did best, which is stretch the imagination. And they drew from all sorts of uh, unexpected sources, shall we say? Yeah, this one looks like it's at Tromaville. Yep, Toxic Avenger coming at you in your nightmares and if if trauma is not trashy enough for you how about a uh, video games yeah, this one looks like it's right out of a capcom side scroller oh totally totally laughing and shooting missiles at you then again some of them definitely have a psychedelic feel to them like this lovely beautiful translucent materials uh fey type creature and then we got other things. Yeah, this one looks like it's right out of an Edward props department where they mashed up an octopus with a gorilla suit. Indeed, but what a lovely sculpt and a decent paint job at that. And, and what a terrifying thing. 
Mm, they got even into the real lowbrow sources. Yeah, this one looks like it's a Big Daddy Ross hot rod. Yep, that old, what is he, an illustrator from the 70s? Oh, no, goes back further than that. Further than that, yep. Big Daddy Roth, crazy hot rod illustrator, dream blade full of crazy miniatures. I think it's fair to say that people actually remember this game because it really went off the rails. What the hell is this? It's a... It's an elephant with a gun for an arm and a snake for a tail. Yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> but is it as crazy as a, a... I don't know, what the hell with a wrench? It's some sort of, yeah, some sort of mutant. A mutant? I don't even know if that's a mutant. That's just something purely out of nightmare. But uh, he's got a wrench, so maybe he can fix things for you. Yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah, he could be some sort of strange space mechanic. And then there's there's Mr. Arms. Yeah, Mr. Handyman. Just as handy as the uh, guy with the wrench. Right, right. And, I mean, holy mackerel, this is also... That's about as crazy a model as I've ever seen in my life. That's a crab, two-headed crab man with translucent claws and holy manoli. But you know, that's not crazy enough for a crazy old dream blade. What do we got? We got, he's, he's been ridden by a crow, a, a crow dude, cowboy. A crow cowboy riding a, a guy and he looks kind of desperate a bit, but oh boy. <laughs> Wacko, wacko, and uh, a a harpy with, with puffin feet. With puffin feet, a puffin <laughs> the puffin footed harpy for the, the bird, bird of paradise, Newfoundland. Yep, yeah, the, the bird of, Newfoundland bird of paradise. There, indeed. And then, uh, of course, getting back to how this is a battle between dream lords, and here we have one of the dream lords who. Um, looks pretty crazy. He's got a, some kind of crazy super saw, but what's really crazy about him... He's riding on... He's, a, well, he's standing he's on... He's standing on a pedestal of bunnies. It looks like a cake of bunnies. Yep. That's... That's over the top. <laughs> Let's face it. Dreamblade is not best known for those lovely, ever more insane models, but it's best known for the completely daft things. What is that fat man eating? He's eating a cat. Oh my god, why is he eating a poor little kitty? And of course, we what fantasy world would be complete without a fairy warthog? Yeah, I always have one when going to battle. Yeah, for sure. no doubt. And some of these things, I don't know what they're thinking. This is only a nightmare for a 18th century Englishman. Otherwise, that is... The Lion Rampant, a source of pride for some. And then some of the models are, well, this is kind of lazy, isn't it? It's a Grim Reaper, Grim Reaper silhouette. silhouette. Not much there, though. And then, of course, there are some truly, truly uh, terrible sculpts and paint jobs. Yeah, probably the worst one in the set. He's a uh, jouster? Lancer? A Lancer. And he ain't much of anything. I don't know. Yeah, kind of sad and weak. But most of this stuff was wonderful. Well, that's the insane nightmare that is Dreamblade. A lot of really quality sculpts, a lot of intense imagination, uh, bordering on absolute insanity. I love the sculpts. The paint jobs are all really good. The game? What do you think of the game, Dave? The game's a really good game. It's a, a tactical game, area control game. You uh, you build your war band in advance. You can there's lots of replayability because you can come with different different war bands. There's four different factions. It's uh, it's a solid game. And it's, too yeah, bad it's so rare. It's rare. The game is pretty fun. Um, the models were once uh, everywhere, but now they're kind of hard to find. But if you do get a hold of them. Um, you can repurpose them pretty well with some difficulty and there are a lot of uh, pages or uh, a lot of videos on YouTube that will tell you how to get these bastards off their bases and prep them for your uh, more conventional uh, tabletop game. But I, I like I like the game Dreamblade and you know they're not on uh, the regular round bases but uh, I 
think they wouldn't bother me just plunking them down straight up. And so, um, yeah, get, get a hold of some Dreamblade models and make your tabletop game a little more insane.